Hello, this is Bernie Wall and in this video I want to share another um, series of tips for your IELTS preparation. And in the last video I talked about timing strategies for the reading test. And in this one I want to follow that with some timing strategies for the writing test because obviously both of these need you to manage time as well as produce some good work. So I'm going to give you five strategies that you can adopt in the writing to help you to manage the time. There is no um, substitute for regular practice. And if you practice the writing regularly and you know what you're doing, you get some feedback from uh, either your teacher or from somebody that knows about IELTS um, or about English language, then you should be able to manage the writing as you go along. And when you are at the level where you're producing exactly what you need for your band, generally speaking, the timing will disappear. But I know for some people, they have deadlines and so they need to be able to manage the timing and the other things in writing at the same, the same time. So particularly for you, but also generally for approaching the writing, uh, the IELTS writing, it's helpful to have a few strategies that will help you to manage the time effectively. So here are the five strategies. Um, as usual, I have prepared a, a small presentation, which I'll share with you now, and then we can go through the five things. So the key is to keep on top of the process. So to make sure that you know exactly what you, you're doing, exactly what you want to write. So let's start with the first strategy. And the first strategy is to keep your ideas simple. If you have very simple ideas, then you can focus on um, expressing those well. And choose ideas that you can express easily, that you can support, that you have some examples around. Don't choose ideas that are too difficult because it will waste your time trying to think about how you can express them. So keep your ideas fairly simple, but they must be relevant, obviously, to the task that you're doing. Make sure the ideas fit the question, that's key. They have to fit the question or you'll lose a lot of marks on the first band descriptor. Then your job is to persuade the examiner about these ideas. Persuade them that they have merit, that they um, are suitable for the question. And you can do that by including a lot of reasons and evidence. So when you've got your idea, how can you persuade the examiner? What are the reasons for this idea? And what kind of examples can you put forward to illustrate it? And remember, it's not the ideas that will get, get you a high band. It's the language you use to express those ideas. So in the writing, it's more, more, more important to focus on the language and therefore, the ideas are secondary. So long as they fit and you can express them well, they are not as important. Right, the second thing is to make a plan. I know a lot of students say, I don't have time, I don't have time, but it is absolutely critical to managing your time. So make a plan that is useful and will help your essay to be written quickly and accurately. It's worth spending a little time. I know students who've spent 15 minutes on their plan, but it's not necessary to spend 15 minutes, and those students were still able to write it in the time. But you should at least spend five minutes or maybe 10 minutes on this plan. And I'm talking about in the exam as well as in your preparation. Fetch out the ideas. Think about the evidence and make a note of that and the examples that you want to use. So, and organize that into your paragraphs. A brainstorm will not help you very much when you're writing, but where it's organized, it will. 
And I have shown you some sample plans before, and I do have a couple of sample plans for task two on my website, ieltslearningtips.com, that you can take as a free resource. So if you go over to that website, you'll be able to download those and see how to go from a brainstorm to a plan and then to the writing itself. Good planning helps you to do the following things. It helps you to write more quickly because you've already done your thinking and now you're just fleshing out those ideas. It helps you to make fewer mistakes because you've already got halfway with your plan and now you can concentrate on spelling, on tenses, on grammar, on linking words, etc. It helps you to organize properly because you decide, okay, that idea goes in the first paragraph, this is the evidence, this is the example, and then the same with the second paragraph. So your organization will be perfect. And it helps you to get your band score because everything will come together um, when you start to write from your plan. Okay, number three is to create your own language bank. Now, this means that you use language that you are happy using, that you can use well without mistakes. So as you do your practice, then start to build up your own little bank of phrases, vocabulary, linking words, etc., that will help that you can use in your, in your um, pre preparation, but that you can also use in the test itself. So words you like, sentences you like, and that you know you can use without mistakes. Often my students will say, I found this in a model essay, I'd really like to use it. And I say, try it out. And if it works well, then use it. If it doesn't work well, try it again or abandon it. But if there are some words or phrases that you just can't get right, then just reject them. There's no point in worrying about things that you're not going to get right in the exam. Experiment if you have someone to check your work. It's a little bit dangerous if you don't. And then keep reusing the things that you use well. So when I have um, essays from my students, task two particularly, but task one as well, it's often written in very similar way so the same words the same sentence structures and for me it's fine i see it over and over but the examiner will only see it once and then before you go into the exam you will know which words which phrases which linking words you're planning to use before you even sit down and see the questions your focus must be on the language because that's what will get you the band seven. So as you write, you should be thinking about language. You should be thinking about linking words. You should be thinking about good vocabulary. You should be thinking about, oh, I used that word before. Where's a synonym I can use? You should be thinking about complex sentences. If you're not thinking about these things, if you're thinking about ideas, you're going to make mistakes. So a simple structure in your plan can now be fleshed out with good vocabulary and all the other things I mentioned, and that's where your focus must be. So good verbs, it's a good place to start. If you're using simple verbs like can and is and have, think about changing for more sophisticated ones. Use lots of noun phrases, especially in academic writing, because it's more formal and it is academic. And then a good range of synonyms. For example, if you have a task that's about children, then the word child can become a young person, can become children, can become young people. If you're talking about children and parents, it can become offspring. If you're talking about education, it can be pupil or student. And these can be singular or plural. So you can have a good range and you won't be repeating the same thing over and over. And then think, have I used this already? Have I used this word? Have I used this sentence structure? Because if you have, and the examiner sees it again, and you're looking for band seven, they're going to say there's too much repetition. So you need to have a lot of variety. Okay, and the last of the strategies is to check your work. 
If you don't check for any errors, you're going to hand those to the examiner. And these are things that you could easily rectify if you have a couple of minutes to go over and check your writing. So you need to build in the planning and you also need to build in the checking at the end. And again, two, three minutes should be enough. So have a mental list of your common errors. They're the ones when you get your writing back from your teacher, you say, oh, I can't believe I did that again. So it might be um, managing your singulars and plurals. It might be a spelling mistake that you make. It might be another grammar mistake that you make. But whatever it is, it'll be something that you keep doing and you need to have that on your mental list. Skim through, check the cohesion. Does it make sense? Have you got a lot of repetition? If you make a good plan, you won't have as many errors because planning makes it more accurate. And try to keep checking as you go along. So if one of your plans is missing out, one of your mistakes is missing out an article, if you're writing a noun, think, is it countable, uncountable, is it singular, is it plural, does it need a, an, or the? Okay, it's a process, but the more you do the process, the faster it will be. But checking as you go along means you won't be making too many mistakes. And when you make changes in your checking phase, be very careful and do it very carefully so that it's clear and so that it's also quite legible. Try not to change too much. And this is where planning comes in, because if you hand over a messy script, it gives a bad impression to the examiner. And if it's too messy to read, the examiner will have to mark you down because they just will not have enough time to decipher what you've written. So be very careful in your checking not to make it messy. Okay, so those are the five strategies. Practice them as you do your writing preparation. Make sure when you do your preparation you plan, you write, you check, you do all of the things that I mentioned before. So hopefully these will help you to improve your timing in the writing, but they are all good practice as well. I've got an article with a little bit more information than there is in this video. So if you want to read that, you can go over to my website, ieltslearningtips.com, and you can find there, um, as I mentioned before, the two copies of the task two plans and essays to have a look at and to see how this process works. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you in the next uh, video.